the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Well, I believe what it tells me, and I believe that that I was healed, and what's coming at me is an attack on my physical body. Yeah. I believe that with everything, and so I don't, I don't accept that. I accept God's word. That's my faith. Okay, did God my say faith that? Is, is is believing God's word? Did God say that to you? Yes. God said to you that on the cross. That he healed you. I think uh, if we can I chime in on that, it, it, the, the healing that occurred at the cross was actually the spiritual, the breach that had occurred in the garden. What God restored. did. He, he restored the breach, so the, the spiritual aspect was actually dealt with. So there is no breach, there's no rent between us by the work that, that Jesus Christ did on the cross. We have been reconciled to our Father. How that manifests itself in our flesh has a lot to do with our faith in what happened at the uh, at the cross because it it, it says that it is the spirit that gives life to the body and our flesh actually profits nothing. And if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us, then it will quicken our mortal flesh. So we have the Holy Ghost now. We actually have access to the Holy Ghost. We have the Father in us, and we in the Father, and we can reap all the benefits of that relationship that restored historically restored relationship can manifest itself in our present day. But there's a place where we have to really be able to receive that mentally. What? And they showed that in, in Jerusalem, not Jerusalem, but uh, when Jesus was able to heal many people in his own time because of their unbelief. So our minds were powerful enough to negate the actual work that God had accomplished. No, so we have a restored relationship. That's history. I don't think that's that's history. That did at all. I don't, that's think, history. I don't think that did at all. I don't think this is about negation or any of that. I think this is about we have failed to understand what God is saying when he said it just shall live by faith. Yeah. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to take, you, you're trying to substitute what is written in the Bible for what the Spirit of God is supposed to be doing in you. Oh, yeah, I mean, no, that's not negating. It's not negating. It. I want to make sure you get this. You're, you're trying to substitute what, what God said to other men. Mm. He didn't say that to you. No, you, wait, you wait, can't wait. get out there and walk on water and get out of a boat and walk on water because Jesus then told you to come. No, he did not. What, 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 what happened? And if he don't tell you to come, next time you find a pond, go out there and see if you can walk. Uh, the relationship. The relationship. All I'm saying to you is, all I'm saying to you is that God has made this thing very personal because yes, he wants to know if you if you really trust Him, not if Peter trusted Him. Not if the saints of old trusted him. He wants to know if you trust him. The, so the, he's the going statement, to be saying stuff to you. The reconciliation was brought. The reconciliation was for mankind. The conversation is for the specific individual. And there is a place where God does speak to us specifically. But he also had already stated that uh, the work was finished at the cross. The pathway back to the presence of God and the, the restored relationship with the Father occurred at Calvary. I, 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 that's that's a broad statement. See, I, think it, it, I, I think there's a misunderstanding of that. Because what was finished at the cross was God, what God had finished. But yeah. that don't mean, okay, so why are all people saved then? Yeah. It had, you have to receive it by faith. Okay, well, I don't know. But that's, but, oh, so now it's faith got to start working. Yes. Yes. Okay, why the, do you the, think the, it's not working different for you? The, bit, the bridge was built. The bridge was constructed. If God did we something on the cross, faith, and yet it's not experienced in people's lives, what makes you think that because God did something on the cross, that's automatically experienced in your life? Mm. Uh, no one's the, saying that it's automatically experienced. We're, we're talking say? about faith, Bishop. Well, so if we're keeping this in context, it's based on your belief. It's, it's, you have to believe the word of God. You, you have to believe what God says to you. Yes. Legit. Yeah. Okay. Not what he said to Peter. Okay, yeah. So if, 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 just let me ask this. If God is no respecter of person, and if he did it for Peter, why wouldn't he do it for me if I asked? 
in okay. faith. I'm not saying he won't. I'm just saying you can't go grab this book and go read it and automatically assume that that means he's saying it to you. Well, I, I know there's, there's that's my point. Okay, I I I I just I don't I don't know any other way than to to, well, to read God's word than to believe that it applies to me. It, listen, it doesn't apply to you, but it only applies to you. Listen, if, if when you read this book, if the Spirit of God does not take the essence of what is being said there and say something to you, okay. all it is is ink on the paper. Okay, I, I understand now. Because it, I guess there's a revelation that needs to take place with you all intimately. Is ink and paper on, 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 on the book. Okay. That's not I, I, I agree. The voice and the speaking of God to the heart of a man on a day-to-day -day basis about the things that are happening in his life. I, I agree. Let me and, say something. And, and, and in that, I can say we're moving from faith to faith. Yes, Amen. Amen. Well, you know and what? I, I can read that. Let so, me say something, too. I know that with the with the Word of Faith movement, I know that uh, back in the day that a lot of those preachers did teach that if you pray for something more than once, then what you're signaling is that you're walking in unbelief. Yeah. I think that I think that was an erroneous teaching. Uh -huh. I, I, I really don't believe that, but there's people that still propagate that that particular premise. But I don't think it's true because I don't I don't found too many times in scripture where something was prayed for more than once. Uh -huh. and, and the Bible doesn't teach me that that proved that they were walking in in unbelief mm -hmm. because they prayed for it more than once. I don't I don't believe that, but. I do know that there was a lot of preachers that that that, that was part of what they taught. And then and that was part of that word of faith movement. But I think that was an erroneous teaching back in the day. They meant way though. But I, 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 that, that can't be. Because exactly. I think sometimes praying about something again can really be an expression of faith. Mm. I think it reinforces Woo. your position. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Well, well, we think that Satan only attacks us one time, then one prayer ought to get it. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're gonna no. be constantly bombarded by the enemy to steal the word that's in our heart at this point. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's a constant fight. He's trying to take it away from us. We're trying to keep it. You know, he got he attacked. We pray. It was, if the man said to Jesus, that man said to Jesus when he brought his lunatic son to him after Peter, James, and John had came down off the mountain with Jesus, and he brought his son to Jesus, he said, "I brought my son to your apostles <coughs> and the man going to heal me." And Jesus said, oh, 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 oh wicked generation, or something along those lines. Like, how long shall I be? And this is what he said. He said, all things are possible if thou canst believe. Yeah. And he said, Lord, I believe. Yep. Help my unbelief. I think that's and what I we are. Think we realize a lot of times how, how much we are in that same predicament. Exactly. <laughs> we are in a place of mixture. Yeah. And what we got to do. We gotta, we gotta kind of let God gotta bring us through to a place of purity where we got absolute and unshakable confidence and trust that He will do what He says. We trust he Him did. to do. And I don't think yeah. that's a bad thing. We, we, we come up with this idea that we supposed to come out the gate full of faith. Hmm. No. You don't work and, like and, that. And, and, and look, I, I, I think it didn't work like that before. I think the other piece is we come out. And then we we think we finished, and it's not a done deal. It's a daily yes. daily walk. It's I, a I daily walk. Did, yeah. We talked about that. Is that most people think that the work had been done at the cross? We were finished. And so right. we accepted Jesus and sit down and wait for Him to come with the bus and pick us all up. But, right. but now we're beginning to realize, and, and that through that restored relationship, there's a conversation, a dynamic conversation going on between God and His creation. It's actually taking place on the inside of us. That voice is speaking to us from within. Right. And he's directing when we will allow him every action that we take. You, we you know, in the Lord with all our heart and all our ways acknowledge him. He would direct your path. Well, you know, it's interesting too. All that him that is weak in faith, don't 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 despise him or reject him. Mm -hmm. no. And then it said that Abraham was strong in Faith. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's a possibility, you see, for faith to be weak and, to, and for God to deal with you to bring you to a place of strong faith. Yes, sir. 
So yeah. I, 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 but, but you gotta see, you gotta start somewhere. And I think what yeah. we don't realize is, is that that's what discipleship is all about. Yeah. But you, it's about you, you know, and developing the maturity. But now, but now, forty years in this thing, you are not still being the first grade now. <laughs>